Shinki Shinju Ryu is on the cover page of Boruto TBV Chapter 15. Mountains of Iron Sand are in the background, and his official color is orange, which means Shinki's time skip design color is some shade of blue, because, as I have explained in previous videos, Shinjus have opposite colors of their victims. Chapter starts with a flashback of Shinki's treefication. It seems we are in the land of wind, which is the country in which Sand Village resides, and the Orochimaru's hideout, in which Boruto and Koji are hiding, is near the land of wind as well. So it seems like Gara's team and Matsuri's team both found Boruto's hideout at the same time. As we know, Koji has hidden it with Genjutsu, so they might be on the other side of the hideout, because there was a mysterious transition in chapter 13 which made it seem like there was something else going on in the hideout. Also, Matsuri found proof that Boruto has an accomplice, so this might actually be their hideout, or they're simply in another Orochimaru's hideout in the same area. It seems like the fight was going on for some time. Gara has been injured, and he is moving Shinki's team away using a sand coffin. Shinki disobeys his father for the first time and seals him inside a magnetic particle barrier palm in order to protect him. Shinki has the KK Genkai Magnet Style, which he uses to control iron sand. And Magnet Style can be used for sealing as we have seen in the Naruto manga as well. Also, this parallels Kawaki sealing Naruto. Both adopted sons, sealing away their fathers. Shinki turns into a tree while using the sealing jutsu. Matsuri confirms that the sealing is still effective because Shinki is still alive even though he is treefied. We move to present in Kanoha. Kankuro informs everything to Shikamaru. Sarada and Sumire also heard it as they were in the room as well. Kankuro confirms that Gara being in the seal somehow saved him from bleeding out due to the injury. Also, he asks Shikamaru not to tell Tamari about Gara. Shikamaru asks Sarada and Sumire to inform him whenever Boruto comes in contact with them. I think they'll realize soon Shikamaru is on their side as well. Also, Koji's toad heard everything as well. We have seen previously that he keeps a toad in the Hokage office. We move to Shinju's. Jura names Ryu and tells him the importance of one's name. It's fundamental information to establish an identity. Ryu calls other Shinju elders, which freaks Matsuri. She is thrown off by the personality change of Shinki and Ryu. But as we have seen, it happens to all the Shinju. Also, we have a note clarifying Ryu's meaning, which is grain of sand, a pun on his ability. Ryu finds Code spying on them via the claw marks cube, and pulls him out very easily. Jura respects him as their creator, even asks him if he needs anything from them. Code is just being Code. He thinks still Shinju are tools and asks them to devour Otsutsuki, and produce a chakra fruit that will belong to him. Jura respectfully declines and asks him to get rid of Buruto, as it's in both of their favor. Code says that he will become a new Otsutsuki and inherit Ishiki's will. Jura wonders what would happen if they Shinju ate the chakra fruit, which might be their end goal as they want to evolve, and chakra fruit might be the ultimate way to evolve. It's funny that Code still thinks they will obey him and goes on to show his dominance, and gets his hand cut off by Jura's biju bomb. He literally has short range, mid range, and long range versions of the biju bomb. Jura once again shows gratitude to Code tells him he lacks motivation, gives him the assignment to kill Boruto and his accomplices, and in return he will give Code the chakra fruit. And Code makes the deal. This is truly funny man. What Code wanted to do to the Shinjus or Claw Grimes instead he is now following their orders. Mamushi laughs and says it refreshes him whenever he sees Code in a pitiful state. Probably because Bug felt like Code unnecessarily brought him to this situation. Code patches his hand using claw marks, which was smart, and says he will have the last laugh and runs away. Ryu asks if he can kill Code next time he shows up. Jura replies, you are free to do that, but the priority is finding the target. Ryu confirmed he already has a target. It's none other than Gara, and he can unseal him from Shinki's ceiling. So basically, Gara is done if Ryu decides to go now. We move to Kanoha. Boruto is sitting on top of Naruto's Hokage stone face, where they used to hang out in part one. Kawaki appears there, and he is being reasonable this time and wants to hear Boruto. Boruto basically says he wants to avoid what happened between Shikamaru and Ino with others as well, and says beside he can handle these interrogations thanks to his master Sasuke. Kawaki immediately asks about Momoshiki, and we get confirmation that Boruto used the karma in the fight against Code when Sasuke got treefied. After activating karma, he felt like getting taken over by Momoshiki, 
So Baruto's theory is that karma activation is a trigger for Momoshiki's emergence. Also, Momoshiki has been quiet for three years, which is scary. As we know by the end of part one, Momoshiki and Baruto's thoughts were merging unintentionally. Now either Momoshiki has found a way to keep his thoughts to his own and is planning something big, or their psyche is completely merged. Basically, they're one being now. Baruto then talks about the Shinju and asks for Kawaki's help. Also gives him a green light once again if Momoshiki takes over. But in order for Kawaki to do any one of the things, let it be helping defeat the Shinju or killing Baruto, he needs to get a lot stronger. Ideally, he should have trained under Naruto, but now it would take too much time. So Baruto drops a bombshell that Kawaki has a limiter that suppresses his attack power and increases defense and regeneration. So basically, back in chapter 9, when Baruto and Kawaki fought, Baruto was dropping him hints that he should either unseal Naruto or conclude that he has limiters. If Amato can suppress Code's power, then he can do the same to Kawaki. Not just that Amato can spy through Kawaki's eyes. Previously in chapter 9, we have seen Amato spying through Delta's eyes. Now this means that whatever Kawaki has seen, Amato saw it too. And I think he added these features to Kawaki whenever he put limiters. Basically during the time skip. Coming back, Amato is trying to understand how Baruto might have this information. His immediate thoughts were pointing to Koji, but he is not considering any Shinjutsu yet. I think it's a matter of time before he concludes Koji with prescience is helping Baruto. Baruto says confront Amato and was about to leave. Kawaki reiterates his goal of killing all Otsutsukis, including Baruto and himself. But he will team up with Baruto in order to deal with the Shinju and chapter ends. This was another banger setup chapter. We got so much new information and new alliances have been formed. Code with Shinju and Baruto with Kawaki. The way things are going. I think we might get two or more setup chapters, which is a good choice in my opinion, because we were continuously getting fights till chapter 13. Comment below with your thoughts on the chapter. Like, share, and subscribe, and we will meet in the next one.